The year is 1611. Most of the crew on the ship Discovery joined the mutiny against their captain. The mutineers set Hudson, his teenage son John, and seven crewmen adrift from the Discovery in a small open boat, effectively marooning them in Hudson Bay. Hudson's boat broke out oars and tried to keep pace with the Discovery for some time. How did Henry Hudson and his son survive this betrayal? With Christopher Columbus's discovery of new lands across the ocean to the west, young men were attracted to rumours of adventure, glory and wealth. Balboa was the first known European to see the Pacific Ocean, which he named the South Sea. Magellan led the 1519 Spanish expedition to the East Indies across the Pacific Ocean to open a maritime trade route, during which he discovered the inter-oceanic passage bearing thereafter his name and achieved the first European navigation from the Atlantic to Asia. Sir Francis Drake was the first English explorer to circumnavigate the world using the Magellan Strait and crossing the Pacific Ocean. Explorers searched with increasing effort for a passage from the northern tip of the world as well. A company of merchant adventurers to new lands was founded in 1551 by Richard Chancellor, Sebastian Cabo and Sir Hugh Willoughby who decided to look for northeast passages to China. The first expedition of the Company of Merchant Adventurers was led by Willoughby, who was chosen for his military leadership skills. Chancellor would function as the navigator of the small fleet, which consisted of three ships. The fleet departed from London on the 10th of May, 1553, but near the Lofoten Islands a storm hit the ships and separated Chancellor's vessel from the other two. Willoughby eventually crossed the Barents Sea and reached Novaya Zemlya. He spent some time sailing along the coast, then turned south towards Scandinavia. However, at the mouth of the Varzina River, the ship became trapped in ice. Willoughby and his crew were found a few years later by Russian fishermen who stumbled across the ship frozen in ice. Chancellor was luckier. He penetrated the White Sea where the local fishermen were amazed by the great size of his western built ship. The region had just recently been added to Muscovy and when Tsar Ivan IV heard of Chancellor's arrival he immediately invited the exotic guest to visit Moscow for an audience at the royal court. The Russian Tsar was pleased to open the sea trading routes with England and other countries as Russia did not yet have a safe connection with the Baltic Sea at that time. When he returned to England in 1554, he had letters from the Tsar with him, inviting English traders and promising trade privileges. The Company of Merchant Adventurers to New Lands was rechartered as the Muscovy Company by Mary I of England in 1555, and in the same year, Chancellor left for Russia again. The Muscovy Company became an important diplomatic link between Muscovy and England. Upon his arrival to the court of Ivan IV, Chancellor secured a number of privileges within Russia for the company. When Chancellor set sail for England one year later, in 1556, he was joined by the first Russian ambassador to England. However, at this juncture, Chancellor's luck finally ran out. Off the Scottish coast, his ship was caught in a sudden storm and shipwrecked. Chancellor drowned, but the ambassador managed to reach the coast. In 1571, the company's right to free trade and navigation down the Volga was revoked by Ivan IV, who had been offended by English demands to close Russian trade to other European nations. Queen Elizabeth I granted the Muscovy Company a monopoly charter on whaling in 1577. In 1607 and 1608, the company sent Henry Hudson on two separate voyages in an attempt to find a northeast passage. 
On the 1st of May, 1607, Hudson sailed with a crew of 10 men and a boy on the 80-tonne Hopewell. Encountering ice packed along the north coast, they were forced to turn back south. The expedition returned to Tilbury Hope on the River Thames on the 15th of September. In 1608, English merchants of the East India and Muscovy companies again sent Hudson in the Hopewell to attempt to locate a passage to the Indies, this time to the east around northern Russia. Leaving London on the 22nd of April, the ship travelled almost 2,500 miles, making it to Novia Zemlya well above the Arctic Circle in July, but even in the summer they found the ice impenetrable and turned back. In 1609, Hudson was chosen by merchants of the Dutch East India Company in the Netherlands to find an easterly passage to Asia. Hudson had been told to sail through the Arctic Ocean north of Russia into the Pacific and so to the Far East. Hudson departed Amsterdam on the 4th of April in command of the Dutch ship Half Moon. He could not complete the specified eastward route because ice blocked the passage, as with all previous such voyages. At that point, acting outside his instructions, Hudson pointed the ship west and decided to try to seek a westerly passage through North America. They reached the entrance of the Chesapeake Bay. Hudson sailed into the Upper New York Bay on the 11th of September and the following day encountered a group of 28 Lenape canoes buying oysters and beans from the Native Americans and then began a journey up to what is now known as the Hudson River. Over the next 10 days his ship ascended the river, reaching a point near Stuyvesant Landing and the ship's boat with five crew members ventured to the vicinity of the present-day Albany. On the 23rd of September, Hudson decided to return to Europe. His voyage was used to establish Dutch claims to the region. New Amsterdam on Manhattan Island became the capital of New Netherland in 1625. In 1610, Hudson obtained backing for another voyage, this time under the English flag. The funding came from the Virginia Company, At the helm of his new ship, the Discovery, he stayed to the north, reached Iceland on the 11th of May, the south of Greenland on the 4th of June, and rounded the southern tip of Greenland. On the 25th of June, the explorers reached what is now known as the Hudson Strait at the northern tip of Labrador. Following the southern coast of the strait, the ship entered Hudson Bay. Excitement was very high due to the expectation that the ship had finally found the Northwest Passage through the continent. Hudson spent the following months mapping and exploring its eastern shores, but he and his crew did not find a passage to Asia. In November, the ship became trapped in the ice in James Bay and the crew moved ashore for the winter. When the ice cleared in the spring of 1611, Hudson planned to use the discovery to further explore Hudson Bay with the continuing goal of discovering the passage. However, most of the members of his crew ardently desired to return home. Matters came to a head and much of the crew mutinied in June. The mutineers set Hudson, his teenage son John and seven crewmen, men who were either sick or infirm or loyal to Hudson, adrift from the discovery in a small boat, effectively marooning them in Hudson Bay. The mutineers provided the castaways with clothing, powder and shot, some pikes, an iron pot, some food and other miscellaneous items. After the mutiny, Hudson's boat broke out oars and tried to keep pace with Discovery for some time. The mutineers unfurled additional sails aboard the Discovery, enabling the larger vessel to leave the tiny open boat behind. Hudson and the other seven aboard the boat were never seen again. 